Hi, I'm Kelly Robbins, Lead Practitioner at Centers for Spiritual Living Boulder Valley. Welcome to our online community. In this week's service, you'll find an opportunity to deepen your connection with your spiritual self through music, inspiration, spiritual practice, and our message. I invite you to sit back, relax, open your heart and mind in order to uplift and connect with your divine self. Thank you for being part of our online community and enjoy the service. Happy Easter. Good morning. My name is Barbara Babcock and I am a practitioner here at Centers for Spiritual Living in Boulder Valley and I want to welcome you to our Easter service. Um, let's start our day with an invocation. So let's everybody take a deep breath and bring us into prayer and knowing that we are here in this space in the sacredness of this service, knowing that we are connected to each and every one of the beings that make up Boulder Valley, knowing that we are here today to welcome in the spring, welcome the renewal, the rebirth, and knowing that we are connected to that oneness and connected to the, to, the, the, to the divine always. Knowing that we bring ourselves together, even though we are in separate homes, we still bring this space in the sacredness and the lovingness and the knowingness of each other. I'm so grateful to be here this morning to bring this part of this service to you and know that it is filled with love and happiness and joy and the reawakening of spring. Let's all take a deep breath, knowing that we are here together, and so it is. Mm. So I want to begin our service as we do each time with our purpose, our mission, and our vision. So our purpose, let's say this together if you know it, celebrating divinity, embracing humanity, and creating community. And our mission is providing tools and support to awaken our community to its spiritual magnificence. And our vision is inspiring and uplifting every one of us to transform the world. So know that that is and represents Centers for Spiritual Living Boulder Valley. Now I want you to notice I have these candles behind me and each of those candles represents the flame that's within each of us. I know that that flame represents the oneness. And it is when you have any doubts or all the craziness that we're going through right now. And if you have any doubt, just look into the flame and know that you are connected to that. And you are connected to each other all the time. That that light burns brightly within you just as it bright, burns brightly within me and it burns brightly within every one of us around here. Know that this community is blessed and is connected through that light that we shine. So I have some readings today to um, support our message. And the first one is this is a beautiful time of year with spring beginning to burst forth in many parts of the world, bringing all its colors, scents, and cheerful sounds. The miracle of the changing seasons is the reawakening and rebirth in nature, inspires feelings of love and reverence within us for God's marvelous creative handiwork. That's from M. Russell Ballard. And then another reading is, Awakening is not changing who we are, but discarding who we are not. And that's from Deepak Chopra. And then if you want to join with me in saying our affirmation for today, it is, Powerful changes are happening, and I welcome and embrace them. Breathe that in and know that. Again, powerful changes are happening. I welcome and embrace them. Just breathe it in and know that powerful changes are happening. I welcome and embrace them. 
Mm, so beautiful. Thank you so much. Now I would like to introduce our musician for today, which is Karen Karsh, our beloved Karen, who sings the most magnificent music and helps bring us all together in song and her humor and laughter. Just makes us feel so good. So welcome, Karen Karsh. So after that beautiful song, I would like to bring us into prayer, knowing that each of us is connected to the divine. If you want to, close your eyes, take a deep breath, put your hand on your heart, feel that connection, feel that knowing in your body that as this beautiful spring day comes alive, maybe with a little snow, it still is a beautiful, beautiful unfolding and awakening and rebirth for each and every one of us. And knowing that the divine flows through the snowflakes and the sunshine and the beauty of the wind and each and every one of us, I know this to be so. I know this to be true because it is flowing through me and it flows through you. Connects each and every one of us like a, design, a, a divine spider web. It's just beautiful to see these connections, that we new connections that we are creating through our world these days. Very different from what we thought our spring would be. And yet beautiful, beautiful and beloved. So beautiful to see all the faces. I see people online, Facebook. Those are our beautiful divine connections. And I know that the center is just thriving through these connections that each and every one of us is so blessed to be a part of. And I know that we hold each other sacred and we hold each other in our hearts. And we know this to be true. We see this, we know this, we feel this. And each and every person who we touch in our world today knows this as well. There is something special, something special happening at Boulder Valley. It is the love and the life that shines through each and every one of us as we move through our day, as we talk to our friends and family on the phone or see them online. As we go to the grocery store, we know that we are that beacon of light, that pillar of light that shines through. You can't help but burst forward in this bursting forward of spring as the flowers come alive and the grass is turning greener. So, so beautiful. And I am ever, ever so grateful to be touched by each person in this community and each person in my world. I'm so grateful for these words. I'm so grateful to be here this morning to bring some form 
of inspiration and love for each and every one of you. Breathe that in and know it to be true. I release these words knowing it to be so, knowing it that it, as it flies on the wings of love, that there is joy in our hearts each and every moment of each and every day. It is so, it is sent with love, and so it is. Thank you, thank you. Hmm. Alleluia. Now I'd like to introduce our speaker for the day. Her name is Reverend Zamira Jazaworski, and she is a licensed practitioner, licensed minister through Centers of Spiritual Living, and she is a focus minister at Mile High Church. She found Science of Mind teachings as a freshman in college when she discovered Louise Hay's book, You Can Heal Your Life, and it changed her world. So beautiful to know her. She is such a blessed, beloved soul. So talented and so passionate. She believes in building interfaith community, creating inspirational materials for kids and families. And she loves and expresses her beauty through the alchemy of her crystal bowls. So welcome, welcome. Good morning, CSL Boulder Valley and happy Easter. Thank you, Barbara, for that beautiful introduction. I'm Reverend Zamira, and it is always a delight and an honor to be back here at CSL Boulder Valley. This is such a loving community that is always inviting and welcoming, and it is a joy to be back here with you today. So how are all of you doing in this time of shelter in place? I know for me and my family, it has been a time of its gifts and its challenges, uh, including right here and this moment when I sat down to record, there were people who were, um, the, the, the city came to break up asphalt on the uh, street by my house. So I'm hoping that you don't hear very much of that in this recording. But this is a time of challenges and of gifts. And some of the gifts for my family and myself have been that we have had time together. We are able to cook dinner together and we sit down every night. And I'm pretty certain that that wouldn't have been happening uh, if it wasn't uh, for this shelter in place order. 
And another thing is that we have learned that we have creative skills that we didn't ever know that we had prior to this. We have had haircuts and nails, hair colorings, including the puppy even has experienced this and uh, we are all sharing those skills with each other. But it's also been a time of its challenges as well in that we have had to learn to share space in a way that we hadn't shared space before and to share resources. And most of all, we have had to learn to listen more to one another as we are sharing with each other. And I am grateful for this time so that we're able to practice those skills because it has deepened our connection as a family. My topic today is resurrecting peace. And I chose that topic not because peace has disappeared or ceased to exist, but simply because this is a time, should we choose it, to rise up to discover the inner peace that is always within us. Spirit as that constant, absolute peace. I love it at Mile High Church recently, Reverend Josh, when he was teaching a class, referred to uh, or invited us, um, should we choose it to have this time be a time for romancing our inner selves? And I love that idea of using this as an opportunity to deepen in our relationship to ourselves. And in that, because I believe that our inherent state is one of peace and of contentment, to make contact with that more often, to make it more of a default in our lives um, so that when we're in the midst of chaos, that's what we reach for. And that's more of our experience than feeling um, battered about by a sense of uncertainty and fear. From The Daily Word, which is a publication of Unity Village, they wrote on April 11th, 1952, I am the resurrection and the life. I willingly let go of sorrow, depression, negation, and I rise in triumphant, I rise triumphant out of any trial. And the Course in Miracles says, let us not spend this holy week brooding on the crucifixion, but happily in celebration for Easter is a sign of peace and not pain. So today we dive into the metaphysical meaning, some of the metaphysical meanings of Easter to find personal resonance within the story, to embrace that spiritual meaning along with the literal meaning so that we can apply it to our life for personal transformation. And re since resurrection is all about rebirth and rising up, it's about rebirth and rising up to our own spiritual nature. The Course in Miracles also says that your resurrection is your reawakening. This reawakening of every son or daughter is necessary to enable sonship, to enable humanity to know its wholeness. So right now we're at a cross point. We're at a choice point, crossroads. And we're able to choose to use this time to greaten our great to build a greater sense of ourselves and our wholeness. And I know for myself that I have had sometimes moments during this shelter in place during this quarantine that um, have felt like I'm in that tomb. And there are rocks, great rocks, that have me in a holding pattern that maybe you felt it too, that there have been moments where I have referred to them recently as Garden of Gethsemane moments. I was talking to a friend and I said, I'm having a Garden of a Gethsemane moment. And what I mean by that is that when Jesus, right before he was arrested, went into the Garden of Gethsemane on what is known as Monday Thursday, he was in the garden with all of his disciples and he began to pray. And he went to God and he said, God, you know, I understand that this is your will, but if there is any other way that we could accomplish the ultimate divine intention here, let's take a look at it. Let's see if, if we can find it. 
I am here to do your bidding, but if there's any other way, please show it to me. And that's what I mean. There have been times in my life where I have felt that there are those Garden of Gethsemane moments where I am in prayer and I'm on my knees and I am saying, Thy will be done. And if there's any other way we can do this, please show me. One of those moments came to mind back in 2014. I owned a townhome and I had rented it out because I had to change jobs suddenly. And during this period of renting, the tenants um, had left on a, a bathroom fan that had, it was the original bathroom fan that was installed in 1972. And this bathroom fan caught fire because they went away for the weekend to their daughter's wedding and left this fan on and it caught fire. And it was a Friday evening where I got the call from the Jefferson County Police Department and they said, ma'am, do you own this property? And I said, yes. He said, well, I'm sorry to say, but it's burnt to the ground. No one's been hurt, but it is completely um, demolished from roof to basement. And don't worry, we've boarded it up. It's safe, but we don't want you to come down here. And we don't know what has started it. So don't worry, but we'll be back in touch. Just give us some time. And it was one of those moments where I thought, wow. I had just prayed for new windows, but this was a little extreme. And I was faced with such uncertainty. I was at a choice point and I was really, I felt myself right on the edge of debilitating fear versus tapping into a greater trust in faith. And the greater fear was financial, um, financial uncertainty. I was a single mom with two young daughters and I had these images of financial demise. I was very uncertain as to what sort of insurance and I didn't know the cause at that point. And there was also the, the fear for my tenants and where were they going to live and how would we breach this bridge of all of, of, of their home being burned down. And so in that moment, I was charged with reaching deeper, with deepening my faith. I was at a point where, um, as Ernest Holmes um, encourages us to turn away from the conditions so that we can deepen in the affirmation of what we know is truth. And I feel like it's very similar to what we're faced with now. And by the way, that, that story did end up okay, but it took over a year to sort out all the pieces. And there were many moments of love and fear and faith and trust and doubt and all of that moving within myself during that time. But I feel like that story is similar to some moments that um, I've had with with this uh, shelter in place where there's great uncertainty. There's some fears about health for family members um, who are um, at risk. And there's some, some fears of, about financial um, stability during these times of not only my own, but of all of my friends and family and of our country and our world. And so I believe today I'd like to share a few ideas for how can we resurrect peace in our hearts during this time right here, right now, where we are faced with that uncertainty. And the first way that I'd like to explore with you is to resurrect and rise up to the peace of spending time in nature, allowing nature to be a support structure right now, even if it's just our front porch or our backyard, Last Saturday, I went for a drive and I parked my car next to a mountain and I saw lots of people out hiking on the trails and I, I thought that's that it would be difficult to maintain that six feet apart. So I just sat in my car and I meditated. I allowed my breath to follow the natural cadence and rhythm and I noted the texture of it. And I allowed that myself that time to attune to nature. I thought, how blessed we are for this magnificent mountains, 
that are a symbol of anchoring, of strength, of tapping into that divine nature at this time. You know, the Sufis, the mystical branch of Islam, have a foundational principle that says there is one holy book, the sacred manuscript of nature. They say to the eye of the seer, every leaf of the tree is a page of this holy book of divine revelation. And the seer is inspired every moment of life by constantly reading and understanding the holy scripture, which is this nature. What if we were to approach nature as this, as if reading a sacred scripture, allowing it it to simply awaken us as we are in it to that divine that is interwoven throughout all things. The Sufis also practice what's called wazifa. It's a meditation to the 99 names of God or a meditation on the 99 qualities of God. And some Sufis consider their wazifa to be listening to the songs of the birds, that they can sense the nature of God in the song of birds. And I love that idea. What if we were to go out every morning and just simply sit on the front steps or stand outside our homes and listen to the bird song and to find the God in that? Recently in our house, we took the house plants and we arranged them in a semicircle to create a sort of meditation space. And I put a meditation cushion in the center of the circle to practice what the Danish refer to as taking a plant bath. You know, forest bathing has become all the rage and that has come from Japan, but the plant bath is about using your indoor plants. Of course, this one wasn't included, but using your indoor plants to surround yourself with the clean oxygen that they provide, the humidity that they bring to your home. Science is showing that plants have the power to help us regulate our nervous systems, to return to a state of calm and to reduce stress. So even if you just have one plant, maybe you could sit by that in stillness each day and invite nature to help you resurrect and rise up to that inner peace within. The second one is to resurrect and rise up to find peace in the midst of the mundane. Today, as we're in our houses, in our homes every single day, daily life, one day, at least for me, I've noticed has kind of merged with another. And what if I began to view spiritual practice as just the art of living instead of something to be done separate from my daily activities? What if I paused several times during the day and just use that Um, activity that I'm doing, washing the dishes, walking the dog, um, cleaning, to turn within and to search for and tune into that divine spark in my heart. The Gnostic Gospel of Thomas, it has this um, writing that says Jesus was addressing his apostles saying, when you make the two into one, And when you make the inner like the outer and the outer like the inner and the upper like the lower, then you will enter the kingdom. And in science of mind, we believe the kingdom of God exists within us. It's a state of being. It's a nature of who we are, that peaceful, unified presence of love. What if all of our activities, we paused and we turned within just to notice that place of love or to see if we could sense that place of love often throughout the day. Ernest Holmes said, the resurrection is the death of the belief that we are separate from God for death is the illusion alone and not reality. God did not die. What happened is that man and woman awoke to life. Sufi mystic Al Hujwiri says, devotees look for sacred space to pray, but the friends of unity find sacred space 
anywhere. For them, the whole world is God's meeting place. While still veiled, they find the world dark, but when the veils lift, they can see that the beloved lies everywhere. So what does it feel like for you to awaken to God's meeting place in all the places of life, even online, even in our Zoom meetings? Where's the sense of spirit within you in the midst of this or daily life? And the final thought is to resurrect and to rise up and to continue to show up for our spiritual practice. It's like winding the clock. We have to keep the clock wound so that our spiritual well is filled. And it's much like tending a garden. And it's about that showing up for practice that we build that capacity over time to reach for inner peace, to resurrect to inner peace in the midst of chaos. I love the teachings of St. Teresa of Avila. And I'm going to read a passage from Wild Mercy by Mirabai Star. She says, Teresa compares developing contemplative life to cultivating a garden. In her life story, she thrills herself by coming up with the analogy of the four waters of prayer. The first water of prayer is labor intensive. We walk to the well lower a bucket down, 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 and then we haul it up. Water sloshes over the slides and we lose about half of it. And then we have to schlep it across the yard to the garden where we carefully pour it on the ground and beg the seeds to germinate. This equates to intentionally nurturing a discipline of contemplative practice. The second water of prayer still requires effort but there is some support. We crank a water wheel, which draws the water from the source and channels it along an elaborately engineered aqueduct, delivering the water through a spout and to a waiting vessel some distance away. The water splashes noisily and makes a big deal of itself as it arrives, but we keep meditating and we have moments of insight. And the third water of prayer is more direct. Through an arrangement of irrigation ditches, a system designed by the Moors of medieval Spain, we simply lift a wooden gate and the water floors, flows out from the mother ditch along each channel, nourishing the tender shoots by soaking the ground around them. In this state of meditation, we rest in deepening states of quiet. The fourth and by far most efficacious water of prayer is rain. And rain is grace. It can neither be forced nor engineered, neither cajoled or bargained for. Rain is a gift from spirit. And our only task is to receive it and to lift our hands in praise. Our individual identity softens and we remember that we are already with the one and always have been and ever shall be. So to close this talk this morning, I would like to in invite all of you to participate with me in a little ritual. And in this ritual, we show up to rise up to the inner peace within us by honoring ourselves, by honoring our mind, our speech, and our heart. And I would invite you, if you would like, to take this ritual into your daily practice this week. Perhaps get some essential oil. This is symbolic of essential oil. And when you're practicing, to anoint yourself in love and reverence for your mind, for your speech, and the gift of your speech to others and your heart. So if it feels comfortable right now, 
you can close your eyes and I'm going to chime a crystal bowl and each of us will affirm together these affirmations as we anoint ourselves with love. Simply lightly touch your forehead with reverence and love and repeat to yourself, I honor the light and the inspiration of my mind. taking another very deep breath that invites you to touch your throat region with love and reverence and say, I honor myself through speaking with compassion for myself and others. gently put your hand upon your heart and with love and reverence say to yourself I look within to be in the stillness and the love at the center of my heart sacred silence we move into prayer breathing in and breathing out we anchor our awareness in that living spirit the presence and essence of God knowing there is one God one love one and breathing in and breathing out in this moment I know that each heart that has come here today is deeply in tune with the inner, inner peace within them, that they are resurrected and that they rise up to know every moment their spiritual nature, to awaken, to rebirth, to expand, to grow, and to feel the spiritual nature of who they are. And I know this is a nature of peace, this is a nature of love, this is a nature of harmony, this is a nature of beauty, of compassion, of health. And that this, these divine qualities are infinite within each one of us. And so in this time of shelter in place, we simply draw into this prayer thoughts of peace, an essence of peace knowing that each heart here is open, each mind here is open to know themselves as divine health. We know divine health and we hold all those who are our are, are first responders and health workers who are showing up for that sacred yes of caring for all of us during this time of need. We bless them and in gratitude we thank them for their divine service. We speak a word of health, of well-being and safety for those who are at greatest risk, who, are, who, are, who may be experiencing the condition of the virus right now. We know a return to wholeness, a return to health, a resurrection of health within their body temples. And we speak a word of peace and compassion for the planet as a whole, for our communities, for each one of us, for our families. 
for CSL Boulder Valley. We know this, that we are surrounded with love. We are deepening in our awareness of the divine. And so right now, I say thank you. I say thank you for these moments today to celebrate with joy together, to deepen in our awareness of the divine within, and to resurrect and to rise up in a state of inner peace, contentment, and complete trust. We release these words into that alchemy of love and law, knowing that it is the Father, Mother, God within that does the work, and we allow them to be so. So with gratitude, we can affirm together, and so it is. It has been a real joy to be with all of you today. I wish you all a happy and joyous Easter. May you roll away those stones of anxiety and doubt and uncertainty and resurrect and rise up in peace. Much love to all of you. Many blessings. And now we will have a beautiful song from the music director, Karen. Samira, thank you so much. That was just beautiful, just wonderful. You made Easter very special for all of us.
Thank you, Karen. That was beautiful. Beautiful service. Thank you. And now is the time in our service where we have our offering. So if you will um, get whatever method you have for giving your phone, if you're using our app, the website on your phone, the checkbook, your credit card, let's hold it up to our heart. And if you will repeat with me our offering affirmation. This perfect gift is spirit in form, circulating and blessing all that it touches. Freely I give and joyously I receive. And so it is. And so it is. If you visit our website, cslboldervalley.org, on the upper right-hand corner, we have a button that says Donate. Click on that button, and it shows you the different options that we have. Um, our circulation and offering, um, keeping our energy moving and continuing to support the center is just as important now than ever before. And we have a variety of options uh, easily to give on the website. We have the texting over the app. You set it up once. It's very safe and secure and super easy once you've got it on your phone. We also have PayPal, another safe and convenient way to donate. You can mail your check-in and we have a credit card option. They're all easily accessible and we appreciate your continued support, particularly right now. And we are working very hard to continue to create opportunities for us to all be in community and to be available to everyone. Everyone watching this, everyone, even if you just come once in a while, we have lots of offerings right now. This week we have several. Um, first, I want to let you know that all of us practitioners are available to talk. If you want to talk, if you're interested in having us do a simple prayer for you or you have something going on, send us an email. Give us any of us a call. Go to the website. We have a link that is just to send an email and it comes to, to me, to some of us check it and we'll send it on to whoever needs it. But know that we're available for you right now during this time and always. We also have several events going on, virtual events going on this week. We have this Tuesday, our practitioner Kathy Nunemaker has her Metapsychiatry Book Club and Discussion. That is at 9.30 in the morning. Um, you will be receiving a newsletter on Monday that has the Zoom links to all of the events I'm going to be telling you about. So just look, make sure you're signed up for the newsletter and look for the easy access on Monday. We also have access on the website. You just click the link and it's free. There you are in the book club discussion with Kathy. On Wednesday evening from 6.30 to 7.30, we have a meditation and discussion on new beginnings with our practitioner, Claudia Milner. It was a wonderful experience. She did this two weeks ago. Join us for free on Zoom. Thursday evening, Jay Birch is doing his monthly spiritual forum. Um, the great thing is we are all doing this also on Zoom. And because we're meeting virtually, we are actually able to bring in a author from the East Coast to speak with us. She, her name is Val Walker, and she has written a book, 400 Friends and No One to Call, Breaking Isolation and Building Community. <clears throat> this spiritual forum is going to be, she's going to talk for about 40 minutes and we're going to open it up for all of us to have some discussion. So please join us for this great opportunity to bring Val to our community. The other things we have going on, these are um, things the center is putting on to serve you and create our community. You might be thinking, how can I serve? And um, we've got a couple things going on. Sister Carmen is our outreach. Again, this month, um, people are in need of food. Our board of trustee member, Jim Shank, has offered to go to your house and pick things up just from your porch. If you've bought some goods that you'd like to give to Sister Carmen, um, visit the website. Jim's number's there. We have all a list of all the items that they need, as well as easy ways to get a hold of Jim. We have also been asked by the, in Lafayette, the director of the Clinica Campesina in Lafayette, they are in desperate needs of masks. And one of our um, community members, Twyla, is putting a mask sewing team together. If we have any seamstresses in the group, Twyla has packets of 10 
materials for the packets of 10 that she has available, um, simply email us at the center or text any text me, text any of us. Um, let us know you're interested and we'll get you Twyla's address and you'll be able to go pick the masks up and sew them. Masks for the staff. Again, our web address is cslbouldervalley.org. You can also email us at cslbouldervalley at gmail.com. And I think that is everything. We have a lot going on this week. I'd like to thank Catherine Snyder, our um, board president, has quickly mastered creating these videos and um, allowing all of us to teach and do our messages and share information from home. I'd also like to thank Reverend Samira for the talk today, for um, our practitioner, Barbara Bab Babcock, for all she's done. And so many, there's so many people coming together, um, helping every day, every week, um, all sorts of people from the community. It's really been a beautiful experience. So thank you, thank you so much. And with that, I am going to pass, pass our benediction on to, the, to our practitioner, Barbara Babcock. So now I'd like to share with you our benediction. Thank you for joining us for this beautiful service. And as you move about your day, remember that we are all connected and we are all one. So join with me in saying our benediction for the day. I now walk so that whoever walks beside me dwells in the presence of God. I now listen so whoever speaks with me knows that I hear the voice of God. Whoever places a hand in mine is lifted, and whoever thinks of me is illumined with God consciousness, for spirit and I are one eternally, and so it is. Blessings to all of you. Thank you. So today I'm just sitting at the piano, and, um, and I started playing this, so... I'm going to try to remember <laughs> what I've been playing and sing it to you because it's going to be a song I think we're going to do a lot from now on. Here we are, we're not in the same room, but I'm thinking about you, and we don't Talking to 